Hi, people. More Patreon requests. Watch out, watch out, watch out. And this one comes from a longtime Patreon and longtime Discord member. Roll it. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Channel's name is The Third Ernest. I'm Ernest Adiano The Third, y'all guys' third family. If you're new here and you're not subscribed and you like what you see at the end of the video, consider clicking the subscribe button bottom right hand corner. Like I said, this request right here comes from a longtime Patreon and longtime Discord supporter, Ivy. And to be honest, we were going back and forth with her name in Discord so much, like we like we changed her name so many times that I completely forgot how to pronounce her name. And I had to ask Discord like, yo, is it Ivy? Is it Ivy? Is it, uh, what is it? And she lives in the upside down world where it's tomorrow. And so she's Mimi's time right now at the time of this recording. So we're just sticking with Ivy, even though I wanna say Ivy every single time. But as you can see, her request is Machine Gun Kelly. And fittingly, the name of the song is Return because this is the return to Machine Gun Kelly on the on the channel since we did Tickets to My Downfall. Yes, I know that there's four or five bonus tracks that I haven't gotten to and that was done on purpose because I didn't want the whole feed to be Machine Gun Kelly. And so I'm going to be getting to those. I just need to get to these Patreon requests and that's what we're doing today. So I'm excited. Obviously, this track is way before me becoming a fan since that recently happened probably within the last six months. So I'm excited to see and hear everything that was pre everything that was pre Rap Devil before for that time frame. So follow your boy on Instagram and on Twitter at the third earnest, just like the channel. Links are down in the description below. And we got Machine Gun Kelly, the return. Let's get it. And they say they know me. Fuck out of here. Only God knows what I've been through, man. So if you wanna talk, get your facts straight first. And if you really wanna know, let me ask you something Have you ever walked in the shoes of a giant Or had to fill the position of a boss Before you were even a client It's no wonder growing up under the roof of a tyrant That I would be the poster boy for defiance Now I'm the voice Bro. of the silence Rhyme scheme fire. I, I, you can definitely tell that the production is nowhere near as clean as it is now. But it's dope hearing this because he's always had that rap ability, that lyrical ability. He's, he's got multiple syllable rhyme schemes here: defiance, roof of a tyrant, even a client, shoes of a giant. And he's like, have you ever walked in the shoes of a giant or had to fill position of a boss before you were even a client? And that can touch the heart of anybody that's like the man of the household because the dad walked out, or, or anybody that's had to be older than they actually are that had to mature. Quick Quickly just to make it in life. He said, it's no wonder growing up under the roof of a tyrant that I'd be the poster boy for defiance. The dad could have had a heavy hand in terms of like discipline, but he's like that. No wonder I grow up to be the poster boy defiance because I didn't want to be anything like that. Now I'm the voice of the silence because the silence, they, they don't have they don't have a voice to make themselves heard. And here that here I am coming from the same position they did. And now I ha I'm that voice. I'm carrying the torch for them. Very similar to what Eminem said and sing for the moment when he said that he that he was the voice for this whole this whole new demographic of hip hop who were troubled kids, troubled white kids who weren't understood, who were grew up below the poverty line or at the poverty or even middle class. Voice of the silence, I'm being quiet. I've seen 20 years worth of violence. I'm tired, it's a burden for me to open my eyes. Not an undercover cop, but it's safe to say that I'm wired. I can't even get a grip on my life of pliers. I'm fucked up in that head. Bro, it's a burden for me to even open my eyelids. Like, fuck being quiet. I've seen 20 years worth of violence. I'm tired. Like, I just want to sleep or I just want to be dead. Like, living life, opening my eyes is so difficult. And he said, I'm not an undercover cop, but it's safe to say that I'm wired. Like, I'll cocaine i mentioned this on previous tracks that he had that addiction to cocaine can't even get a grip on my life of pliers i'm fucked up in that head close my eyes because i see demons round my bed so depressed open i'm up hoping i'm dead thought the fame would make it better but it only fucked me over never used to touch a bottle now i'm hardly ever sober people want to be my friend so yeah, I just said that. I just said that like, like it's so hard to open his eyes. He'd just rather be dead because of the depression. My depression opened him up. I'm hoping I'm dead. Fire. Fuck me over. Never used to touch a bottle. Now I'm hardly ever sober. People want to be my friend. But where the fuck were y'all when I was 10? 11 and 12 getting bullied and beat up in the gym. I couldn't never get a girl. Now all of a sudden I'm the man. Students try to get back cool with me again. Fuck them all. Because guess where they gonna be with my record? Bro. 
Every everybody that's like that that has his look or anybody that doesn't have the aesthetic of a rapper or doesn't have like the upbringing of what a traditional rapper would have, I could definitely understand that sentiment of like fuck everybody, fuck everybody that wants to be my friend now. Y'all weren't there for me whenever I was getting bullied for wanting to rap or I was getting bullied for being the scrawny kid. Like Drake says it plenty of times. Like I used to get teased for being black and now I'm here and I'm not black enough. It's the same sentiment. Fuck them all. Because guess where they gonna be when my records stop playing? Gone with the wind off in the record shop saying the kills fell off. I knew what would happen. Stop hating cause a month ago you was all over my jock saying that I'm that motherfucker. But now I'm whack motherfucker. Opinions change but you cannot change facts motherfucker. If you want bullet points then call me a get motherfucker. I lay my whole life out like a mat motherfucker. Man I lay my whole life out like a mat like a fucking yoga mat you roll it out and also like if you want the bullet points I'll turn into a gat which is literally a form of fire a gun but like it's you can see you can hear it's extremely rough around the edges like it's not it's a good foundation for what the, for who he became as a rapper but it's definitely nowhere near as polished as he is now and that's what you would expect over eight years eight six years whenever he put out rap devil you would expect some type of growth and some type of like maturity and, and confidence on the mic he said, but guess where y'all gonna be when my record stops playing? You're gonna be at the record store saying Kells fell off. Like, you ain't gonna be here. You just a fair weather fan. I lay my whole life out like a mad motherfucker. Then I've experienced some things that would stop you from meeting my schizophrenic cousin. Try to end my life while I'm sleeping. My bummy uncle wanna call now that he sees me succeeding. My mama left me for a teacher. Lost my dad to the preaching. Half my friends are buried six feet on the rest in the precinct. Literally watched my grandmother die from diabetes. I guess my prayers were answered when my heart got cancer and beat it. No, I want to get her out of job. Give her the garden of Eden. I did it. No, this is what he said when I was when I, when I did the Blue Skies Live. And he's like, I'm just telling you about the highlights. You don't really want to live my life because you don't want all the shit I had to go through to get to the position that I'm at. My mom left me to be with some teacher like she just abandoned my ass. Half my friends are all buried six feet in the dirt or they're in the precinct. Like they're either dead or in jail. That's like another creative way of saying dead or in jail, which is a very common phrase throughout hip hop. And he says, my, I guess my prayers were answers when my aunt got cancer and beat it. Psh, dog. No, I want to get her out of job. Give her the garden of Eden. I did a lot of bad shit. God got even. But for the price I had to pay, I wish I'd stop breathing. My yeah, you see how that choppiness of like that got got even like that's that delivery doesn't have enough conviction behind it to me. Like it sounds like it sounds choppy. That's that's really what it sounds like. God got even. But for the price I had to pay, I wish I'd stop breathing. My girl sat in the bathtub, eight hours bleeding, hearing the doctor tell us our child's heart stopped beating. Fuck a million. I wouldn't. It is did, did he? Ha I know he has a daughter now, but did they have a miscarriage at first? Shit is sad, dog. Doctor, tell us our child's heart stopped beating. Fuck a million. I wouldn't take a dollar for a life, but I will do what's in my heart and trade this dollar for a mic. I wrote the song in hopes that it could help someone get through the night with no intentions of getting paid. I'm just doing what is right. I do it for the fans. Know the real fans who stuck with me through the storm because they understand that there's a genuine pain behind the words I'm saying and they embrace me. So I thank y'all the stand ain't it crazy bro is there not a hook in this track at all no there's not we're already like more than halfway through the track and it's just all straight lyrics like yo i mean it's, it's good i like it but again it's just like very very rough some of the rhymes some of the some of the scheme sounds forced like he's trying to make it fit like he's trying to make the syllables fit where they need to go as opposed to just let it flow and letting it come letting the rhyme scheme do what it's gonna do on its own naturally but it's dope that he's saying like i wrote this in hopes that i can help someone get through their day or hopes that like i've been to the bottom i've been where they're at or lower and i've gotten to the top i've rose out of there so if you have the strength to be if you have the willpower to get up out it's not impossible for you to do because i did it ain't it crazy that passion is my achilles heel either that or keeping it way too real but they don't know how it feels to feed off the energy of a crowd step on stage and they get loud and dad i'm gonna make you proud i know we don't speak right now but i think turning new leaves what we need right now i love you and you may not see right now but i'm begging for forgiveness i'm on my knees right now you saw your son is yo this shit is this shit is like emotional for sure like all the different all the different aspects of his life that he's going through and these it's like like i said like blue sky is live he says you don't want my life i'm just telling you about the highlights this song is the exact opposite he's telling you about the lows like his him and his dad have a riff like he doesn't speak to him i get i'm assuming he repaired that riff because i know he got really close with his dad toward the end of his dad's life but even with the emotion and everything if i'm just looking and listening from objective eye and ear like i i can i can hear that this is not this is not the best production quality this is 
isn't the best that he's ever rapped. This isn't the best rhythm and pace of the rap. Kells in 2020 or even 2018 Kells would if he wrote this if he wrote this track now it would have been way smoother. You saw your son as a dropout, stuck around when I ran. Saw your son as a feather, now see your son as a man. Ooh. See your son be a father to a beautiful child. Or just see your son, dad, see me smile. Who would have thought it started at the Yo, see that? That's like, I turned my life around, Dad. I hope that you can see this. I want you to see this. I want you to see that I'm, that I'm not wasting my life away. You've seen all my lows, dropping out of school, being a felon. You've seen all the things that I've done that I'm not proud of. Now, now look at all the accomplishments that I've done. And I hope that I make you smile. And I hope that you can see me smile because I know it's been forever since you've seen that. Just see your son, Dad. See me smile. Who would have thought what started at the bottom would someday grow? From three people in the crowd, unpaid shows. Ooh. Six people in the room, one meal a day. Another opening act when no one knows my name. Saw the demos that I passed out laying on the crown saw the rappers i befriended copying my style saw opportunities pass while these fakes got rich now i can't stop speeding like my brakes ain't shit for six months i went through hell and back yo dope it's dope to like hear the progression that he took you on within that like last four or six bars starting with three people in the crowd unpaid shows to six people in a room one meal a day another opening act where no one knows my name like we went from three people to six people and now we're an opening act but now we've kind of plateaued i've seen people take my style and be and get successful off of it but i knew that i had to grind i had to hand out demos like by hand i had to i couldn't let it, i couldn't i had to seize every single opportunity that i got now i can't stop speeding like my brakes ain't shit for six months I went through hell and back Right at the height of my success All of a sudden doctor said I couldn't Where I had a pile up on my vocal cords Left with a choice Stop now or possibly lose my voice But I woke up every morning and recorded Till my throat swole shut Talk blood after every show because it hurt that much I went weeks without even saying the word to myself No help insurance so got the bills piled on the shelf But for my daughter I didn't know all this about him. I didn't even know that that was a that was a decision that he had to make, or that he even had that that, that physical ailment, bro. That sucks to like have that on your throat. You're rising to this level of fame, and then that potentially is gonna stop you. And you say, "Fuck no, that's not gonna stop me." But yeah, like the rhyme scheme right here. This is what I'm talking about. I woke up every morning and recorded till my throat swelled shut. Cough blood every show because it hurt that much. Like that, that's not a good rhyme scheme. No help insurance, so got the bills piled on the shelf. Fuck for my daughter and my fam, and every single fan I push through it. Now I'm back for y'all again. As for my competition, it's the beginning of the end. But right now, this is my return. Amen. Kill, kill, bro. Okay, okay, so is this literally, was this the first track on the album after that, like, medical situation happened where he couldn't talk, where he was, like, he literally couldn't record, couldn't perform or anything? I'm assuming, since the song is called The Return, and we ended the song with that, that that was the situation. And this is on his Lace Up album, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming. Yo. That shit right there was fire. Like it was fire in the sense of like everything that he's talking about and all the and all the adversities that he's had to overcome. If I had to like rate it in terms of flow and in terms of production, it's probably not even gonna be like a six out of ten. And it's obviously rough around the edges on the lyrical portion, like like the way that he makes the song flow and the way his rhythmic pattern and what he's talking about, his cadence, his delivery, his rhyme schemes. All of that shit is extremely, extremely rough right here. But the foundational elements are there and what he's talking about, it's like, it's very emotion filled and it's very impactful and it hits you in a certain way and you feel sad, but at the same time you feel hype because you, you're like, you're seeing him come out from the trenches, you know what I'm saying? So Sonics wise, not the greatest track, but what he's saying, what he's talking about, you know, the, the, the swagger that you can hear on the mic, it's all fire. But yo, that brings us to the end of this video, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate your time. If you like what you see, consider liking the video, leaving a comment down below. If you like what you see enough, please consider subscribing. Yo, Ivy. Nah, I'm just kidding. Yo, Ivy, I appreciate the request. I appreciate the Patreon membership. I appreciate you interacting and being a regular in Discord. All that shit is like, is exactly what I do this for. And I know that you see, I know that you see potential in me, which is why you're on the Patreon. So can't even tell you how much that means to me. Anybody else that potentially wants to get a request in or anybody else that wants to support the channel monetarily and, be, and become part of this like movement that we got going on, that allows me to make videos full time, record, edit multiple things 
things a day and have a steady stream of like of content for y'all patreon is what allows me to do that full time so if you want to potentially support that movement and see us go where we know that we can get to patreon is the first link down in the description i would really appreciate it Follow your boy on Instagram and on Twitter at the Third Earnest, just like the channel. Links are down in the description below. Hit up the Discord, also down in the description below. But that's all that I got for you today, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate your time. And like I always say at the very end of all of my videos, go out there in the world, love and care for one another, love and care for each other. And I'll catch everybody on the next video. Peace.